Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white tokens deck featuring Ajani, Nakadal Pariah as our commander. This 2-mana 1-2 enters making a 2-1 cat token, and then whenever one or more other cats we control die, we can transform Ajani into the Nakadal Avenger, which has a very powerful 0 ability, making another 2-1 cat, and then more importantly, if we control a red permanent author than Ajani, we now also get to deal damage to any targets equal to the number of creatures we control. So that's our game plan, we're gonna try to go wide, figure out a way to transform a Jani, and then now with the zero ability we'll deal a ton of damage, assuming we have another red permanent in play. Then we also have a small cat sub-theme, so we can maybe use a plus two ability to give us a plus one plus one count on each cat we control, the minus four ability we're not gonna end up using all that often. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories, and the first one might be the most important one. These are all red enchantments that allow us to sacrifice creatures to deal damage. That way we can now easily sacrifice a cat token to transform a Jani into the Planeswalker, and because these are all red enchantments, we now have another red permanent, so the zero ability can also start dealing damage. Then we've got our cats, which make it easier to transform a Jani, because the more cats we have in play, the more difficult it will be for the opponent to block our creatures or to attack into them, since we will always threaten to transform a Jani. And then once we transform a Jani, of course, our cats are still nice with the plus two ability. And then we've got our token makers, lots of two mana cards that make two tokens to help us go wide to set up that zero ability. And then some of these are also red token makers, which can also help enable that zero ability even more. And then our token makers continue at 3 and 4 mana, and then we've got multiple ways to pump up our creatures as well, because if we're going wide it's nice to be able to increase our creature's power for instance, so we can deal more damage to close out the game. And then we've got some removal as well, some cheap removal like Swords and Lightning Bolt, and other ways to leverage our deck going wide, like the case of the Gateway Express which can eventually pump up our team. And then we get to play with Conclave Tribunal which has Convoke, so we can easily cast it alongside another token maker to have a very efficient turn. And then finally our miscellaneous includes a few ways to protect our creatures. If we don't want the opponent to take out our Ajani for instance, then it's nice to have a way to protect it. We've got some mana acceleration and then a bit of card advantage with Welcoming Vampire and the Knight Errant, another card with Convoke that can help find additional creatures. So that's kind of the rough breakdown. Now for the deep dive, starting with our enchantments here, there's a barrage of expendables, which requires one additional mana to sacrifice a creature to deal one damage, so not the best one. We've got collateral damage, which is just an instant, which can sacrifice a creature to deal 320 target. So this one's not an enchantment, but it is still a cheap way to sacrifice a creature and transform a Jani. So it's a little bit better than bolting your own creature at least. And then there's a Weaponize the Monsters, which is one mana to play, two mana to sacrifice, but then deals two damage to any target. And the best one is a Goblin Bombardment, since it doesn't require any additional mana, so we can sacrifice a creature to deal one damage to any target at will. And then our cats include a Garrison Cat, which will leave behind a Soldier token when it dies, so it also plays well with our Sacrifice theme, similar to Sacred Cat, which we can embalm out of the graveyard to make an extra 1-1 Life Linker. Then Leonin Vanguard can enable right away on turn 2 after playing a Jani, so it can immediately gain extra life and deal more damage. Also plays quite nicely with our Ocelot Pride, which can then start making additional cat tokens and will reach the City's Blessing in no time. We've got Adorned Pouncer, a 1-1 double strike, which we can eternalize out of the graveyard. So it can also hit pretty hard, especially if we start increasing its power. And Leonin Relic Warder, an answer to artifacts and enchantments. And if the opponent takes it out to get their stuff back, we might get to transform a Jani in the meantime. The Leosaur we can mutate to give our creatures plus two plus one. So also a nice anthem effect. We've got King of the Pride giving other cats plus two plus one. So it can also go pretty hard. There's a Cub Warden, which we can mutate to make a pair of life-linking cat tokens. We've got the War Leader, which when it attacks makes a pair of life-linking cats that are tapped and attacking. And then a Regal Caracal will give our cats plus one plus one and a lifelink, making two cats when it enters. So we've got a nice cat sub-theme here. And then continuing with our other token makers and just good individual cards, at one mana there's Esper Sentinel. Guide of Souls plays well in a deck making lots of tokens as we can gain a lot of energy and then pump up our creatures. Legion's Landing we can transform pretty quickly, giving us Aldanto, which can make even more life-linking tokens. The Warden can start tapping our tokens to scry one and get a plus one counter, eventually gaining Flying and Vigilance as well. Kumano, a cheap red permanent to enable a Jani's zero ability, and then if we play Jani on turn two it will get an extra plus one counter. Ragavan, another excellent one drop if we can play it early and clear a path for it to start making treasure, and then later it will still stick around as a red permanent to enable the zero ability. 
We've got a bunch of two mana token makers with a raise the alarm, resolute reinforcements. Then we've got some goblin token makers with a dragon fodder, goblin instigator, and Krankos command. Forbidden friendship makes a hasty red dino and a white human soldier. We've got the rally making two hasty human soldiers, potentially giving other humans haste as well. And then a Ralph's reinforcements making blue and red elementals, so these are still fine for a Jenny. And then the Vanguard, a 1 2 flyer that can attack, making additional soldier tokens. At 3 mana, there's Adlin, which also benefits from a wide board as it will increase its power. Fable, just a powerful card that can make a Goblin Shaman token, give us some card selection, and then eventually the Reflection can also maybe start copying some of our creatures that make tokens when they enter. We've got the Legion Warboss making Goblin tokens each turn, Squee also makes Goblins when it attacks, Battle Screech making Flying Bird tokens can easily flash it back the same turn we cast it to make even more birds, Mondrak will double our tokens while still being a 4-4 that can also become indestructible if we sacrifice some tokens to it, and then the Wandering Emperor gives us removal that can also make 2-2 Samurai, and the Thousand Moons Smithy can also easily transform into the Barracks by tapping 5 creatures, and then can make even more of these large gnome soldiers that also scale with the number of creatures we control. And then our Anthem effects include Flowering of the White Tree, which is even better if we control legendary creatures, giving them plus 2 plus 1 and ward 1 as opposed to just plus 1 plus 1. We've got Sanguine Evangelist with Battle Cry, so it can pump up all our creatures when it attacks, making bad tokens as well when it enters and dies. Wedding Announcement can make human tokens, eventually giving the team plus 1 plus 1, maybe drawing a few cards as well. The Recruiter will give our team plus one plus two and haste when it enters, so you can maybe play it alongside another token maker to attack for a ton of damage out of nowhere. War Leader's Call is also great here, giving our team plus one plus one, and when creatures enter, they deal one damage to each opponent. The Reinforcements makes a pair of 1-1 one -one soldiers, and then gives the entire team a plus one plus one and haste. Venerated Loxodon with Convoke can tap our creatures to give them plus one counters, and then a Virtue of Loyalty can first make a Knight token, and then later the Enchantment can untap all our creatures and give them additional plus one counters each turn. Our removal includes Swords and Lightning Bolt, could also play Path to Exile if we wanted to. Case of the Gateway Express is excellent here, giving us removal as well as an Anthem effect, and then playing Red-White means we get to play with Brutal Cathar, a nice creature that can remove something when it enters. The Skyclave Apparition is pretty similar, and then the new Flage also gets to take advantage of all the fetch lanes, making it easier to escape. And then Conclave Tribunal, we can also easily convoke the same turn we maybe played a Jani, and still exile an opposing a non-land permanent. And then in our miscellaneous section, there's Mox Amber and Arcane Signet for a bit of a mana boost, Giver of Runes and Skrelf to protect a Jani. And then a Welcoming Vampire can draw more cards when creatures enter. Knight Errant we can cheaply convoke to find more creatures when it enters. And then a Tajik can also apply a nice bit of pressure and can also maybe protect our creatures from a damage-based sweeper. So that can also come in handy. And then our mana base is pretty simple, just lots of red-white dual lands, playing all the red and white fetch lands, which can either get our basics, Sacred Foundry, or the Elegant Parlor, which lets us surveil one when it enters, and then as many untapped dual lands as possible. Some of our utility lands include Shafet Dunes, which we can sacrifice to give the team a plus one plus one until end of turn. Castle Embereth can also pump up our team, and then a Den of the Bugbear, a powerful creature land. And then the Channel Lands, Crucible to make more 1-1 tokens, Saigancho as removal, and then Castle Ardenvale can also make more 1-1 tokens each turn as a mana sink against control decks. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Hanadu. And what do we think of our hand? Weaponize the monsters is a great way to transform a Jani, gives us a red permanent as well. So yeah, I'm kind of into this hand. Turn one weaponize, turn two can play a Jani and a Mox Amber, and then we just need one more mana to transform. Bonus got Mox Amber as well. So we can basically transform a Jani at will now. Opponent has the utter insignificance, so now we will have to sacrifice a Jani before we can actually transform it. That's alright. In the meantime, we could still play Mondrak since the Jani is still legendary. And then next turn, double our tokens. I 
in between Squee and Reinforcements. We will be making quite a few tokens already. Okay. Could also keep up the Weaponize the Monsters activation, in case they try and block. Although, opponent likely has a protection spell up for one mana here to target Tero and Nadu. Alright, maybe not. They didn't seem to pause at all. Either way, we can start by attacking. Opponent blocks a goblin. So, now I could sacrifice our token to deal to, to our opponent directly. Could also look into sacking a Jani. So we can then next turn replay it, and then I guess, yeah, with a land we can immediately transform. So maybe that's better. So we'll just let damage happen. And then keep up Weaponize to most likely sacrifice a Jani end of turn. And we'll see what Nadu can come up with in the meantime. Uh, they're gonna just use their land to target Nadu, get another land. Not that the uh, oil counter is gonna do anything for them. And our opponent's gonna pass a turn, so... Possible they have a counter spell up. And we have multiple legendaries for Mox Amber to still make mana. Uh, opponent's gonna Void Slime the trigger. So it implies that they have another counter spell for a Jani on the way back. Or they're just gonna Cyclonic Rift bounce Mondrak, that's still fine. So what we can do now is still play a Jani. And then use Weaponize to transform it right away. By sacrificing our cat. And at this point I think going face is reasonable. Or we could try and take out Nadu. A Jani transforms. Plenty of red permanence. And then we can use the zero ability. And for damage can take out Nadu. I guess it's a little risky for opponent hits a land and then has a protection spell, so going face might have been better. Either way, attack. And opponent's at one. They have a lot of things they need to answer. And they cannot even tap mana confluence to make mana. And our opponent goes out in style. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Goblin Bombardment is our best enabler to transform a Jani. And then we've got plenty of Sacrifice fodder. Atraxa could be a Super Friends deck, could be a Poison deck. We'll see. Sentinel. So it could also just be good stuff. So turn two, we have a few options. We don't have to immediately play a Jani if we want to kind of play it safe. Dualist points towards some plus one counter synergies, perhaps. So not sure how much removal we need to play around. Could just uh, play the Goblin Bombardment now, and then next turn go Signet into a Jani. Although our opponent will get to draw as per Sentinel that way. Could just play a Jani and then attack with a Vanguard. And then hope they don't have a clean answer to a Jani. Yeah, I think that's still fine. That way we don't run into Asper Sentinel drawing cards. We get to gain life of Vanguard. Fight beside me, brother. And we make it awkward for the opponent to attack until they deal with a Jani first. But uh now if they just remove a Jani, of course, like they did, it's going to cost us a bit more mana to redeploy. That's alright, we still have time. Four mana is quite reasonable. And now... Could go Signet into Bombardment, since our opponent will get to trigger Sentinel anyway, may as well cast two non-creature spells in one turn. And hope they don't have 
a counter spell for the bombardment. Okay, and then go to attackers. Don't think we want to attack in case they have some way to put plus one counters on the duelist. That could get ugly. I'll just stay put. And next turn maybe redeploy a Jani and transform it. Alright, opponent goes for a Traxa. No plus one counters to proliferate yet. Take our turn. So now I can play a Jani, sacrifice a cat to make our planeswalker, and then I'll have uh, three cats plus one damage means I can actually take out a Truxa here. So I think that's the play. And then do I care about the life gain from Vanguard, or do we prefer the two ones? Yeah, I guess the two ones are better here. And I'll do this now so I can actually attack with my author cats, perhaps. Could also leave all our creatures on defense to protect our planeswalker. But uh, I'll get in with one of them. Opponent takes it. And then we can fetch for our surveil land. Alright, followed our retreat. Can now start putting counters on their stuff. But I can respond here by taking out the Esper Sentinel. Which seems worth it. Opponent draws. Could still double block. And then we can pretty quickly rebuild an army to leverage a Jani. Alright, that works. And of turn fetch. And Mox Amber at this point doesn't seem all that necessary. More token makers are good. So we can main phase, just uh, raise the alarm, rally, and make a uh, knight as well. This is not a human, but just want to have more creatures in play before we activate a Jani. And then, thanks to Bombardment, we still have a red permanent. Hit for two. And then on the board, I can sacrifice six creatures for six more damage of Bombardment. Skralv is not going to do much. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Crucius. A very powerful mid-range strategy. Our hand has some good tools as well. With Bombardment, a great way of transforming a Jani. But we can expect some interaction, maybe some discard spells to take away the Bombardment. Right, I think I do deploy it before a Jani, so we can immediately sacrifice to transform if needed. And then next turn I can go Signet into a Jani. With the Giver of Runes, it was a little safer to maybe play a Jani, since we have the protection. But a discard spell would still be a concern. Opponent with a Ragavan dashed. Could take it out here by sacking the Giver of Runes. Deny the treasure. Yeah, I think I'm down. And then let's immediately just transform a Jani, I think. We don't have to, we could wait in case they have a 3 damage burn spell for my Planeswalker. On the other hand, if I do it now, I mean, I just get a replacement cat, so sure, I guess we can wait. Since we can just transform it at will. 
Although now if I sack the cat, they could try and respond by taking out a Jani. And then even though I can sacrifice it, I'm not going to get my Planeswalker. But if we feel like they keep up removal, we can try and play around it. Okay. So, got a few options here. Battle Screech is looking good. Can immediately flash it back. And then I could tap a Jani, just attack with a warrior. And then, yeah, it does seem like they maybe are keeping up removal. Blot out instead. Exiles a creature or planeswalker with the greatest mana value. Alright, I guess that gets around me transforming a Jani, interestingly enough. So that was actually the perfect answer. And then we'll send it back to the command zone. Hit for two, and then next turn I can redeploy Jani and maybe transform it. But yeah, the fact that this both hits creatures and planeswalkers made it very difficult for me to keep a Jani on the battlefield, and now a toxic deluge is kind of painful. So the perfect answer to this board. Now we do get to deal some damage on the way out, at least. So yeah, some uh, nice answers from the Crucius deck. Bombardment is also a nice answer to Crucius, as it only has one toughness nowadays. And then we can fetch for Parlor. Bonus tapped out, so it is safe to transform a Jani. Question is whether we make a token. Wedding announcement seems fine. Or if we just want a plus so it's out of burn range. But of course a black removal spell like Blot Out could still get it. So interesting choice. Could also just make a pair of knights. And then if they play Crucius, I don't mind sacking one of them to take it out. Um, can't quite double spell Fable and Wedding Announcements. Yeah, playing a Jani still seems a little bit better to me. And then I'm not opposed to just transforming it now. And then I need an answer to a Planeswalker specifically, which might be harder to find than an answer to a creature. So yeah, definitely had a few options here. And then, thanks to our bombardment, we also get to deal one extra damage. Opponent seems to have an answer to a Jani. A Molten Impact, yep, yeah, that'll do it. I'm back to the command zone, now costing six mana. And a Harvester. Okay, take our turn. And we can double spell Fable with Krenko's Command, or maybe Recruiter with Krenko's Command to immediately get in for a bunch of damage. Don't hate that idea, or we can just set up some more tokens first, which I also don't mind. And then maybe prefer Wedding Announcement actually over Fable, since my hand's good, I don't need to discard anything. So let's go ahead and attack. Yeah, Goblin Bombardment is kind of carrying us here. Makes it so if they do have removal, we at least get some damage out of it. And yeah, opponent explodes. They just cannot get Crucius in play and have it stick around. And sooner or later, we're going to burn the opponent out or transform a Jani again. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Captain Cisse. Often a combo deck with Paradox Engine, so having plenty of answers to it is important. This hand's alright, maybe missing a way to sacrifice a cat to transform a Jani, but uh, I'll still keep. And then we can start by getting either Sacred Foundry or Parlor, depending on whether we need two swords on turn one. Turn two, we can deploy our commander. Opponent does not have an elf, so we can get Parlor. 
and look for maybe a sacrifice effect. Planes, probably not all that great. Yeah, we cannot damage our own creature with Case of the Gateway Express, just double checking here. Alright, there we go, Goblin Bombardment. That's our best one. So, don't expect too much removal, but they could have some white removal spell next turn for a Jani. Still kind of into just playing it here, since we might be limited on how much white mana we have available. I will prove my worth to my pride. And then next turn we could already get our Planeswalker going. And a one toughness creature is perfect for bombardment. So step one attack. And then play bombardment. Take out the carrioted. And start making more cats. Still have swords available, and then ideally find a land so we can double spell our token makers next turn. The garrison cats not bad either. So let's maybe go garrison cats plus forbidden friendship. And then zero. Now dealing 5 damage. Let fury ignite your heart. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Yeah, it just shows how broken an early transformation can be. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Domri, Anarch of Bolas. So red-green kind of aggro deck. Our hands, decent. Could use some token makers, perhaps, to help convoke Night Errant. Lenor Elves, I probably just need to bolt. And we did find a Krenko's Command, so that helps. Playing Sentinel would maybe draw us a card if they play Domri, but I would rather avoid turn 2 Domri. Okay. If I play a Jani here, it might get removed by some burn spell. So maybe I just go Krenko's Command here. Right, doesn't seem like they had anything. And a Growing Rights is next, so not going for Domri. Okay. Well, we've got a nice turn coming up, I think. Can play a Jani, Sentinel, and Convoke Night Errants all at once. Fight beside me, brother. Finding just an instigator, sadly, bombardments and weaponize, as well as barrage. Actually, all our sacrifice enchantments here going to the bottom. This would have been very useful at uh, transforming a Jani. Uh, Druid is next. Now I could play Relic Warder, exiling the Growing Rites. Not that it does much right now. Um, and then if they try to remove Warder for an extra Growing Rites trigger, at least we'll also transform a Jani. If I sacrifice Canyon now, it's going to be harder to sacrifice Shafet Junes to pump the team. So maybe for now I still double spell, and then next turn we can look into sacrificing our lanes. Bowden doesn't seem to be holding any instant speed removal, at least. So everyone can attack. They can eat my Asper Sentinel for free, still take some damage. That's okay. Sir Poet's got six mana. And they're gonna spend five on Nissa, which can animate a forest, and then they can still play Domri. They probably don't want to attack first, otherwise we can trade and transform a Jani. 
right, opponent runs out Domri. And then they could try and fight Jani itself. Although they don't have any blockers at the moment, so we will be able to take out both Planeswalkers pretty easily. And then we can start doing the math here to see if Shafat Junes is lethal. And yeah, Shafat Junes looks to be lethal, although now Flowering can do the same for us. So that'll work too. Just go face. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jadar, Mono Black, Sacrifice, or Zombies. We've got a reasonable hand, could use an extra land for sure, maybe an extra cheap token maker, so we can get out the Tribunal faster. But I do like the Giver of Runes protecting Ajani in the meantime. And then I'm probably going to have to play Pathway on red, so we will take some damage off Shafet Junes. Raise the alarm's not bad. Still down to play a Jani. And keep up Giver of Runes. I will prove my worth to my pride. And then next turn we could answer Jadar in a multitude of ways. A land is good. So, now with a land, Brutal Cathar is an option to exile Jadar. And then with Giver of Runes protecting it, they likely have to send it back to the command zone. That's maybe more mana efficient here. As much as I want to deploy Welcoming Vampire to start drawing. Alright, opponent left. Jadar underneath Cathar, so they might have an answer to it. A sweeper would be painful. But it could also be an edict effect. Just making a sacrifice or largest creature, for instance, would maybe get it. And get to untap. It is nighttime. And we have a few more options once again. Pona maybe not realizing what happens with Jadar. Welcoming Vampire seems to be quite good here, so that's probably my play. And then for now we can attack. If we're afraid of a sweeper, then maybe keeping up Raise the Alarm is better. Although a lot of the black sweepers are at 5 mana. That opponent's going to try to take out Welcoming Vampire. So yeah, we can protect it with Giver of Runes. Then the Adventure fizzles so they don't get access to the 2-3 lifelink. This is probably just bait to clear a path for a different removal spell. But I'm still going to force them to go for it. And alright, maybe they didn't, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Captain Cisse once again. So yeah, we're gonna need to find some answers for their commander, or at least a sacrifice effect to transform a Jani a little sooner. So this hand's not gonna cut it. Well, we've got a nice tokeny hand, making a landing which we can transform. Adeline's good with a horn bug. No red permanent for a Jani, since this makes white human tokens. But this might still be aggressive enough that it's worth keeping. Although if our opponents get a fast combo hand, they can still uh, probably get us. And yeah, if we go turn 1 landing, we can actually transform a turn 2 with a rally. No mana elf for the opponent so far. The new Shifting Woodland can also be a nice way to access some powerful cards in the graveyard. Let's say if a Paradox Engine gets answered, 
you can still turn the woodland into a copy of it. So our opponent can deploy Captain Cisse. And yeah, we currently don't have a great answer. High Gunjo can maybe be channeled, but they're not forced to block. Opponent's got their own High Gunjo, so it's on their radar. And it's going to be a Solar Transformer first, so maybe they're waiting to keep up protection for Captain. That opponent had the answer. I guess we also would have been a mana short of channeling Igenja with only one legendary. So now they can deploy Captain Cisse with maybe a protection spell available, which means the turn after they can potentially start comboing off already, usually by getting a Paradox Engine, a Grand Abolisher now, and a Sylvan's Crying. Well, don't have any instant speed removal, so the Abolisher is not that relevant right now. Okay, so play a Jani. Nothing is more important than family. Attack. Could channel I Gunja to take out the Abolisher, but I don't think we really care. So I'll just play the Crankos command. Taking out Incubation Druid is more relevant, since that one can maybe untap with a Paradox Engine, but I guess our opponent still needs to untap with Captain before they can actually use it. So, yeah, I think we'll let damage happen and play Crankos Command. They could also let Captain go to the graveyard if we answer it, and then use Shifting Woodlands to get the ability. And now Virtue of Loyalty, the draw. So we can attack all out. And then I expect him to have a way of protecting the Captain here, if I were to channel Iganjo. So I could just cast the Virtue of Loyalty instead, but I might have to just try to take out Captain anyway. And then our opponent still takes 5-6, can still at least uh, activate Adanto. But yeah, opponent has touch the Spirit Realm to flicker Captain. At least we saved our Goblin token. And then this is going to prevent us from activating abilities. So would I rather have a 2-2 two -two Knight or a 1-1 one -one Lifelink? Next turn I might be able to do both, so that's a little bit more efficient. But I think the extra damage could end up mattering. So Captain's back, can now activate, and we'll see if our opponent can just combo off right now. Get Paradox Engine, I'm sure. Yep. So they still need a cheap spell to actually untap everything. And there's a Lunar Elves. So Captain can activate again. And our opponent can pretty much put their whole deck on the battlefield. With now Mox Amber giving them an extra mana each time. So yeah, that's why you need answers to the Captain. But our opponent had some protection spells as well as Abolisher making it harder to interact in their turn. And our deck doesn't have much removal to begin with, so we really need a way to transform a Jani. Now Incubation Druid makes 3 mana, thanks to the plus 1 counter from Rishkar. And Abolisher can also tap for mana. So yeah, opponent can pretty much put all the legendary permanents in their deck onto the battlefield. At some point they might get an Akroma's Memorial to give their creatures haste. So this is going to take a pretty long time for the opponent to go through all of it. But uh, you kind of get the idea, Paradox Engine is not a remotely fair magic card. 
So first they're getting their mana engine sorted, Iron Crag and other legendary permanent they can find. But already 10 mana floating, now Great Henge can make mana as well. So we could sit here and let the opponent play it out, but I don't think there's any way we can still win. And it's going to take the opponent a couple minutes here to play it out, so good game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Niv Mizzet, Parun, so blue red control with sometimes a combo finish with cards like Curiosity that can kind of go infinite with Niv Mizzet. Our hand is reasonable. You can always bolt our own cat just to transform a Jani. Although we can expect lots of answers. Opponent probably holding a pact of negation if they're pausing. So it'd be safer to play a Jani once we have Bolt available at instant speed, so we can immediately transform. The problem there is opponent could just counter a Jani later, and right now I also have Skrelf for protection, so I feel okay playing a Jani. And then if I really wanted to, I could Bolt my own cat next turn to get the Planeswalker going. Although they could still deal damage to the Planeswalker itself to maybe take it out. Okay, Knight Errant is interesting too. So I think we play Adlin. And start beating down. And I'll happily use Skrelf here. Keep up the pressure. Does mean they can maybe take out a Jani next turn. But it's only four mana to redeploy. And now we start going wide, making it easier to convoke the Knight Errant. Hoping they don't have some three mana sweeper, Cinderclasm. Yeah, that's exactly that. And uh, yeah, back to the command zone with a Jani. Still have our Adlin at least. So play Guide of Souls, play Leosaur. Wouldn't be mutating it. But this will also net us some energy. And Adlin's applying a nice amount of pressure. So we'll see next turn with a land, maybe go for reinforcements. Otherwise we might go for Convoked Knight Errant. And then tapping three creatures is probably good enough. We don't have many four or five mana creatures in the deck. And that way Adlin can still attack. So they likely have a counter spell for our next play. The fetch land lets them shuffle away the cards they put on top with Brainstorm. And Pun going for a Strike at Rich to maybe ramp out Niv Mizzet next turn. Recruiter's excellent too, although unlikely to resolve. So yeah, we have a couple options here, but I'm kind of liking the Knight Errant play. And then wait on Recruiter until after they play Niv Mizzet maybe. Keep up Lightning Bolt, but if we find some white one drop I can still cast it. That resolves, so third energy for Guide of Souls. And we did not find any creatures, sadly. And go to attackers. Could see them answer Adlin, although not too many four damage at instant speed for two mana in red, so it would have to be a bounce spell. We've already seen Cyclonic Rift. Right, they're just gonna bounce Adlin now, fair enough. At least we didn't waste our energy, but our opponent didn't want us to make an extra 1-1 one, one token. Alright, so opponent can maybe tap out for niv -Mizzets. and we did see them pause earlier, so they probably still have a Pact of Negation in hand, or they might have shuffled it away with a Brainstorm. Never mind, Goldspan Dragon. So that will allow them to still have 4 mana after attacking. That works. I think I'm fine just bolting them end of turn, since we're not going to be using this to transform a Jani. And then, yeah, possible that next turn they can play niv Mizzet and combo off in one turn. Or at least pull very far ahead. So I have to probably go for Recruiter instead of Adlin now. 
As it can maybe threat on lethal. Opponent's got two cards in hand. They can uh, play the Brazen Borrower as well. But Borrower, I guess, will be able to block whatever creature I get flying with the Guide of Souls ability. So we're just gonna grow one of our smaller creatures. And a Prismari Command can take out Leosaur. Opponent not making any treasure, so just a one red mana floating. And they did discard Pact of Negation now. And we get to attack. And our opponent should be dead here to the ability. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we're playing the mirror match. We have a barrage to transform a Jani, so that's great. Yeah, I think this hand will do. So my sequencing turn one probably still give her. Alright, Curse of Silence means I'll have to wait on a Jani until we get to four mana. So that is a setback. But we have some other two drops we can cast in the meantime. And I'll just get a planes here, I think. Play Giver, turn to Raze, or maybe Vanguard first. And then we can Convoke a Loxodon. Bonus got Tarona Jani. Fight beside me, brother. And possible they have one of the new flares in hand as well, the one that sacrifices a creature. Which, uh, yeah, I guess would be a way of transforming a Jani already. So that's potentially a concern. But uh, still gonna play the Sky Knight. Invasion of Gobakan, more hand disruption. We'll see what they go after. Takes my barrage, so that's now three mana to play. And fury, I see that's what they were holding. They could have tried to damage their own cat to transform a Jani. Can save the Sky Knight at least. And then we can block a Jani to prevent a transformation. Okay, so what's next? I can still cast a Raise the Alarm, play Skrelv. Iganjo's gonna be a little pricey right now. But I do want to start making tokens. Double blocking a Jani is maybe the way to go. Assuming our opponent doesn't have any tricks up their sleeve. Okay. They can replay a Jani, but at least they don't have the Planeswalker. Okay, so now I could play my own Ajani, still convoke a Loxodon. That sounds appealing. And then with Barrage I can transform my Ajani pretty easily. Our opponent will sack the curse. And then I can keep Skralv available. Okay, so next turn we get our Planeswalker going, hopefully. Whereas the opponent might have more difficulties getting theirs in play. At least that's the hope. 
And opponent's got Flage. I'm going after Skralf. So yeah, if I use Skralf, they could just respond with their answer. So Skralf down. And an Alsaid, that's fine too. Opponent's got one card left. And we'll have to take it here if we don't want a Jani to transform. Although, without a red permanence, a Jani is not all that scary. So maybe it's still fine to just uh, block, let them get the Planeswalker, and I'll be able to take out the Planeswalker, which the Alsaid also cannot really protect. Would have been a different story if they had a red permanence to deal damage. Okay, so I can play my barrage and activate it potentially twice if I play out a Ganjo, which seems fine. All right, so how do we want to start? I only have the one cat to sacrifice to transform a Jani. Okay, maybe start by attacking my opponents. And then let's say Vanguard goes after a Jani, and the rest goes face. Could also keep some blockers back to protect my Planeswalker a bit better, which is reasonable. Something along these lines. Of course, can't forget about uh, Array, which can be sacrificed as well. But... Uh, yeah, let's try something like this. And then the token can go after a Jani as well. And the Barrage can likely finish off their Planeswalker. Put on Let's Damage Happen. I cannot abide this treachery. And then I think we're fine to Barrage now. Go after... The Alsaid, maybe. Sacking our cat. Transforming a Jenny. And we'll let that happen since we're just going to take out the 3 2. Could also go face. And I guess our opponent is also not too far from transforming Flage, which could also take out our Planeswalker, but this still seems pretty good. And 6 damage might still be worth it to go upstairs. And then just play Asper Sentinel. Alright, so opponent needs something special here, and yeah, opponent has seen enough. Awesome. So we... Got a mirror match as well, showing the power of these sacrifice engines, especially in a deck that's designed to go wide with a whole bunch of tokens, because then Ajani's ability here will deal even more damage. So yeah, overall, quite pleased with how this Ajani deck performed. As we saw against Captain Cisse, the deck can be a little soft to opposing combo decks, since we don't have a whole lot of interaction, and then especially if we don't find a way to transform Ajani, or Clock can be a little bit slow. But for the most part, the deck has game against almost every opponent, and if you get a quick transformation going, the deck can be incredibly brutal. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.